What is up fellow bench warmers? Welcome to your daily fantasy. What's up guys? Welcome to another quickie. Another quickie means another day of injuries and COVID and lots a lot more players were out today. Uh, actually, a lot more players because some rested, uh, some on COVID. I think there's a lot more who rested today than uh, on COVID. Uh, so yeah, my name is JJT, your host and of course uh, with Komish. Komish. Yes. The biggest okay. news, I guess. Let's talk about first the biggest news. Anthony Davis is the biggest injury news today. Uh, four weeks. Well, could have been worse. Yeah, could have, could have been worse. But I I mentioned yesterday that it could be a sprain because of how the injury happened. And yeah, it was a sprain. And since this is a sprain, it's basically like Jamoran's injury right now. Yeah. Uh, four to six weeks for Ja. I think they put four weeks as a re-evaluation time only for Anthony Davis. Probably around four to five weeks, maybe. Maybe that. Maybe around that time. Okay. And well, let's just hope that when he comes back, um, you know, he'll be back to that top ten player that he was early this season. Uh, he has been struggling. I mean. Anthony Davis has been struggling over the past couple of weeks, I guess. Um, yeah, struggling in the sense that not as good as when he started. Yeah. But he was still around the top 10. Uh, the last game was the really the game where he just scored 9 points. But that was a game where, you know, he got uh, sprained ankle now that the knee. So so that was that was really a, a pass for him. But yeah, actually, I'm I'm hoping when he comes back, the Lakers will still be in contention for the playoffs because, you know, four weeks without him, we don't know where the Lakers would be. No, they'll be. In, I think they'll be in contention. I I don't think they will allow that to happen. This is not a young team. I mean, yeah, you know, no, you you cannot. I mean, it's down to LeBron and Westbrook, and you're not even sure if both of those will be healthy for the whole four weeks. Yeah. To be honest, LeBron, yesterday, the body language of LeBron wasn't that good. And LeBron has a history of, you know, if his teams start to lose it, he lo- loses what it. What are you saying? Are you saying LeBron gives up Um, he his won't, teams? He won't give up yet. But if, if it goes south, there's a chance that, you know, there's still a chance. There's still a chance it's going to go really bad. There's still a chance it's going to go really bad. So I hope there'll be somewhat just, you know, there five, six seed somewhere there so at least there's a playoff hope so that AD would have something to come back for in four uh, weeks' time, you know. Yeah. Uh, from the fantasy perspective, though, any... Do you see any players that should be added? Because I don't see much. Uh, maybe Melo, uh, Dwight maybe later on when he comes back. I think Dwight. I think Dwight. Um, I don't know how long Dwight will still be out, but if you have an extra IL plus or IL spot, you can put him there. Uh, just looking at the roster, even if the Andre Jordan will start, it's not really worth adding. We know that he's really bad. He'll he'll have some games where he'll have ten rebounds maybe and probably one or two blocks. But to expect him to do that consistently at this point of his career is impossible. So right now we're hoping that Dwight returns sooner than, than later. And yeah. they'll need a center. They'll need to play a center. <laughs> I mean, there's no way that they'll play LeBron at center, I think. So yeah. so it, it's it's Dwight. It's Dwight there. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, Anthony Davis out four weeks at least. Uh, could be five weeks or six. Uh, just frustrating because last year, this something like this also happened last year. Uh, though last year was worse. I guess the injury was worse last year, or the timing of the injury as well. It was pretty much the same as this year. Like it's, it was probably mid year, mid season, um, where Anthony Davis was out. Um, and we also talked about uh, Wendell Carter Jr. last in yesterday's quickie, um, a strain. So yeah, no timetable yet. Uh, but we don't most- know. If- we don't know if it's mild. I, I searched about muscle strains in the calf because it's lower leg, so it's a calf muscle strain. 
a mild one they, according to that uh, article that I I read could be just days or maybe a week and you could be you know back to your at least normal activities but if it is a grade three, grade four strains, there are surgeries required that would take longer. So um, I'm just basing it on how uh, Wendell Carter Jr. reacted on Twitter. He, re he posted some, some things on Twitter and he was giving a thank you sign to, to, to God. So I, I think it's a mild one. I think it's a mild one. So at least two weeks, I would think at least just two weeks. Yeah, hopefully. probably after the holidays. Uh... Yes. Yes. Hopefully, hopefully after the holidays. Here. Probably January. Probably January. Yeah, around mid, I think. Um, I don't think it's mid. If it's mid, it's a month already. So probably early. Yeah, I mean, injuries like these, uh, I always put a little more, right? When they say it's four weeks, it's probably not just four weeks. It's probably just five weeks or uh, give it another week of allowance. Uh, yes. For these types of injuries or players, especially Wendell Carter Jr. has had uh, injury history, like we said yesterday. Um, yeah, we talked about some by players there: Robin Lopez, Chuma Okiki. Um, you know, Gary, Gary Harris. Harris was yeah. dropped. Um, he played well. Another good game today. Um, yeah, but uh, I think, yeah. I think Robin Lopez would be the better add for me at this point with, with this news that he's probably out a couple of weeks uh, Wendell Carter Bamba is in COVID protocol so they don't have a center yeah. Lopez had a 2010 double-double this year added uh, today so so Robin Lopez probably over Okiki but if you want more long-term yeah even long-term I think I, I think it's Lopez uh, although if Bamba comes back Okiki will have more value because Okiki can play can play power forward mm -hmm. Yeah, but, right. but for the meantime, it's Robin Lopez. All right. Uh, COVID. Let's talk about some COVID. More yeah. players uh, added to the list. And of course, the most notable <laughs> player that's been added to the list is we were just talking about this yeah. last night. And we, I was a bit optimistic that he'll play a game or two before he gets into the COVID protocol. But apparently, he gets there without playing any game. Uh, Kyrie Irving gets into COVID protocol. One thing is not clear though. Uh, I've seen tweets uh, about this COVID protocol thing. Uh, once you're in COVID protocol, there's really no assurance that you tested positive or uh, like you said yesterday, you, it could be some contact tracing thing. Uh, although of course, uh, Kyrie hasn't really had much contact with any of his he mates. Mates. Yeah. Uh, but still, that doesn't mean he didn't have any contact. Maybe some uh, of his family or people he got in touch with. KD. Uh, yeah, maybe KD. <laughs> KD is also in COVID protocol. Yeah. was supposed to just be resting yeah. uh, today. But yeah, he gets into COVID protocol. So the top three of the Nets are all in COVID protocol. Harden, though, could probably be back next week. Hopefully, right. hopefully, yeah, he, he, he got in first. Um, just some information with Kyrie. He, he tested positive. It's confirmed that it wasn't a, it wasn't a contact tracing, or it, is, it isn't also a thing like he's coming back to the team, so they're putting him in protocols just to, to be safe. It's not that. He tested either false positive or positive. They said it's either false positive or positive. He tested positive, so, and he's unvaccinated, so that's, he has a different rule. Compared yeah. to the others, he would need five straight negative results, five days straight before he can return to practice. And since he's coming back, the Nets want him to practice first. So give him five straight days of negative that would give us that would lead us to Christmas Day, and then there's still the need to practice. So I I I would think he the earliest he can return is probably probably the first week of January, something yeah. like that. Probably that. Yeah. Uh, and there goes as well the idea of trading him now. Yes, not yet. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm pretty sure no one would try to touch him at this point. Uh, yeah. yeah, but yeah, but you never know. Maybe you want to try it out at least with one one of the top teams in your league. At least try it for one. I mean, just one, yeah. and see how that goes. Uh, I'll maybe try one or two. Um. Yeah, um, KD, like I said, on COVID protocols as well. Um, so Cam Thomas 
David Duke Jr., who had another double double today. He had a great fourth quarter. I mean, most of his stats actually came in the second half. He was almost like zero points and two rebounds or five rebounds by halftime. So, so the 18 points, 14 rebounds ending was surprising to me because I, I picked him up. I, I streamed him and I looked at the stats in the first half and I said, oh, this, this was a mistake. But then I, I looked again and, and then the, all the tweets were about him. So he was do, doing his energy hustle stuff. So yeah, for, for without KD, I think Duke, I think Cam Thomas and Duke. And in some injury report also, Blake Griffin actually yeah. hurt his knee. Uh, Today, uh, but 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 they did. They weren't clear if it's a bad thing. The exact words of uh, Steve Nash was his knee was nicked by a by something. So they're not sure about his availability tomorrow. Nick Laxton has a wrist thing, yeah. so he wasn't able to play today. So I don't know. I don't know who's left. I don't know. I I don't even want to look at whoever is left. Patty anymore. Mills. Patty Mills is left. Uh, center wise, their, their rookie Dayron Sharp is probably the only big left there. So if you yeah. know, well, if, and, and everybody can play, or they might play small ball and have David Duke, uh, play the center. Um, yeah, but yeah, the Nets are badly depleted right now. Badly. Uh, yeah, good thing they're you know somehow first in the East, right? And yes. they have some you know room for these types of things even if they lose some games I, I, I enjoy games like these you know players you don't know players you you because I'm a PBA fan I want to see well, the PBA imports <laughs> <laughs> like the, Cook, the only thing frustrating about these types of you know uh, games is that it won't be close <laughs> not even close well unless they're playing like today I think the Nets played Orlando right um, yeah I mean, both teams are totally... At this point, there are a lot of teams that are totally, totally devastated. So, yeah. there could be close games. There could be close games. Um, other COVID, Mobley, Evan Mobley and Pascal oh, Siakam. Yeah. Uh, Siakam was a late scratch, actually. Um, but OG returned. So, at least, you know, if you have the... If you're holding on to OG... You're still good. At least uh, Siakam, if you have Siakam, at least you've already had a taste of a, of a few weeks without Siakam. So you know what to expect now, right? Um, oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's bad. Right? Uh, wait. Yeah. So... All right. Okay. So, yeah. Evan Mobley out. Um, also on COVID, uh, Shedai Osman played well mm -hmm. today. Uh, anybody else worth picking up there? Well, pretty much they're like we said, they're the Cavs are in, in fantasy terms, they're eight man deep, I guess, with Kevin Love and Ricky Rubio. In just in case Kevin Love was dropped, maybe he'll be the most valuable, one of the more valuable ads there. Well, if he was dropped, I, I don't know what league you are in. But if he was, if he, and I, unless you're in an eighteen team league, he should not be available. But um, Dean Wade start continues to start. We said you know he's supposed to be just a one game replacement, but but now uh, Mobley actually practiced already yesterday. So I, I I don't know how why how maybe this is a contact tracing thing. Remember Okoro is the other one who's positive, and these yeah. are the young players in their yeah. team. And remember, we, we said yesterday as well that uh, look out for those teams with just one or two players under COVID protocol because there might be a few more that's going to get there. Actually, look out for the players who are, who are, who are uh, the replacements and who played well because they're the next one in COVID protocol. <laughs> if you play well, if you're the guy yeah. who's supposedly the next Next man up. I mean, are you talking about Miles McBride, yes. who I added again? Yes. Yes. Like before, it was Bones Highland. Then we had Canton Grimes, Emmanuel Quick. We had Terrence Ross the other Terrence day. Terrence Ross. I mean, all the players were okay, pick this guy up because he's going to play. He played well. He's going to play. You know, he's going to he's gonna be the one to take over. And then he's going to go to COVID protocol. So, 
So I really don't know. I really don't know how why is it like that. But yeah, uh, for the clubs, I think Okoro and Mobley are close because supposedly they're the the young ones. So it could be possible that you know he 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 got it from Okoro, possibly. Yeah. Um, like I said, Miles McBride was out on COVID protocol. Marcus Morris also out. So a bunch mm. of uh, players. Uh, Luke Kennard should it be there, but yeah. in case he yeah. is there, uh, Terence Mann could be there in your mm-hmm. waiver wire. Uh, so yeah, he he started as well today. Um, yeah, and we talked about David Duke, Cam Thomas, and Kessler Edwards. As replacement players for those in COVID protocols. Let's talk about. Um, isn't Miles Bridges in COVID protocol as well? No. No. Did I put Miles Bridges? I put. Uh, it's Miles McBride. It should be All Miles. Right. So I mean, I might because la- seems like last night I saw some Miles. Maybe it was McBride. It's so Miles McBride. Don't scare me like that, man. Don't scare me. My, my team. My, my team is already depleted. I I need Miles Bridges badly. But but uh I who who else uh who else did they put as, a, as some by players um Nick Batum Nick Batum came back Justice Winslow started for Marcus Morris they didn't start Batum but maybe it's because he's just uh recovering from the ankle yeah he might be available in your leagues I think with Morris out he's worth a look and I say uh, Hartenstein also got injured today by the way uh he sprained his ankle so. They're they're down Ibaka, they're down Morris, they're down Hartenstein. Zuba. Well, didn't play well, but he's the remaining big guy there. But uh, Batum, Batum is the guy probably will be available in your yeah. league. Uh, and good. So yeah. other by players, KJ Martin, Jordan Nora actually played well, and I'm quite happy. I streamed him for today. Yeah. Last minute stream. Uh, and he had 28 points uh, on four threes. He's a young player, and he played 42 minutes today. Because they they rested Drew. Yeah, they, that's another thing. They rest. I mean, other I, than the COVID. Yeah. Today was a day of rest. It's uh, NBA should not allow something like this. Like the Bucks basically tank the game. If you if you if you're a fan and you're gonna go and watch a game and then you know you know Yanis is out. You know Chris Middleton is not playing yet. And then they rest the, the lone maybe star that you can watch, which is Drew. And then even Grayson Allen, who's so he's a young player. You rest him. Yeah, you, you came off a back to back, but I don't know. I I, I don't understand how how like the well, mark- maybe they weren't feeling well. I mean, I don't know. Even even what the Warriors did today, right? Like Steph, yeah. Raymond, and never played it. It's just giving the game away. And well, fantasy wise. Nora, yeah, he, he the Marcus Cousins also also had a double double. Yeah, and he started as well. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, the Marcus Cousins. Pat Connaughton came off the bench. Um, he had actually a game time decision tag, but no notes there. Mm-hmm. Um, I I think he played very limited minutes. Uh, I'm not sure if he's injured and all. Um, uh, I think he just played what ten. 15, 15 minutes for Pat. I think he played only two or, five. The box, the box just tanked the game. No, he has an injury. Uh, Pat has an injury. And right, played, so there. I, think, I think he played because uh, they they rested the others. So they, they lacked players, I think. So, so there. Uh, uh, yeah. So other ads, KJ Martin, 13.6 rebounds. Uh, he's been solid. Over the past couple of weeks already, uh, it's just that um, you know, not yet to that level where you you will be quite confident in the ad. Maybe a stream for KJ Martin. Uh, he is averaging almost thirty minutes already the past four games, so that the 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 minutes are trending there, so that's good. But the uh, but, the, yeah. but the production is not yet. He's basically points and rebounds. And today he had a double double with the rebounds. But um, still off the bench. So Daniel Tace, I think, did not play today. I'm not too sure, but I didn't see him. So so maybe that gave him more minutes. So yeah, Jeremy is correct. I think more of a stream or a deep league, uh, sixteen team. Maybe you, you could you could you could try and see if if this continues. Uh, 
Yeah. Um, maybe let's talk about some feel good players because there are some interesting ones, particularly the one in New York. Uh, Kemba Walker played and played well. Take note, he played really well. Uh, probably the best game of his of the season. Now, yes. the, the biggest question now is that is this real or is this something that's going to be temporary? You know, with the uh, with just because the Knicks are really shorthanded at this point. I think it's temporary. I don't know about you, but I think it's temporary. Uh, but temporary for a couple for the next week maybe because they don't have players or, or the next two weeks. But when the players come back, I just feel like you know Tibbs. He has this way of you know um, being hard headed sometimes. He feel if he feels like this, he does. He wants it to be like this. So so. Well, I, I just feel it's temporary. But you have to pick him up and then see where it goes, right? Yeah. Um, other players who were struggling over the past few games but picked it up. For Ye, had another, had, I think this is the second good game. I think he had a good game as well last time. Or if it's not last time, it's the other, the other game. The other two games ago. Uh, the, last, the last game he had 20... 23? I think. Yeah, today he had 32. So, yeah. so it's it's good. Uh, and he the first time they mentioned about his injury. So uh, he was wearing something in his shoulder, and according to him, uh, his ribs got hurt, and because it got hit, it was not a fracture or anything, but his shoulder moved, something like that. So they're bringing it back, but well, he's playing through it and he's playing well. But in case he's him, been dropped. Uh... He's been dropped. I dropped him. Yeah. I dropped him. Uh, I'm um, pretty sure there are a lot of uh, teams who've already dropped for me. Uh, so you know, maybe worth picking him up. Yeah. Uh, could be worth. You know, they're they're really down players. Uh, no one there could really score as much, other than maybe is Ju- Julius still playing, right? Yeah. So Randall, Randall and Kemba and Fournier, those three guys are the only guys who can score. But you know. Um, like we said, Kemba was out of the rotation, so I, I'd be surprised if he's gonna play like this uh, consistently, at least in the next two weeks. I'll be surprised if Kemba plays like this. But yeah, I'm more confident with Fournier because yes. his role didn't really change, uh, and then it got bigger. So yeah, um, you have to remember Kemba had was playing against Boston, the team that gave him up, was playing his first game back, so he wants to prove something to Tibbs. So as as I said, it's double revenge game. Revenge against everybody in the in the in the game. Like all of you, f all of you. I'm gonna show all of you what, what I can do. So I, this is adrenaline more than anything for me. I don't even know if yeah. Like, and you know you know when you uh, stop playing for let's say a few months, and then yeah. when you get into that court, sometimes you feel really good about it, yeah. and yes. you play really well. Um, but later on, you'll get back to earth, and you know you'll show it. You'll you'll the true colors would come out, or at least the true uh, performances. So this is also perfect for for Gemba in New York because they're showcasing him. He has trade value. He's just, he's, uh, his contract is just eight million a year, so he could be traded. He could be traded. So that's why I said with two weeks of value for Gemba, pick him up. Ma- Maybe after the two weeks, he gets traded, gets you know, he gets to play somewhere else. Yeah, where he'll be useful. Yeah, he'll be useful. Maybe not not the top one hundred, top eighty Gemba, but still useful. Yeah. So so you have to pick him up. You have to pick him up. Yeah. Um. Sadiq Bay, uh, had another good game. Um. Yeah. I mean, hold on to him. I mean, really, not much to talk about the. Pistons are also depleted. There's really no one there to score other than Sadiq Bay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sadiq, no one, Sadiq. I was thinking on top of my head, who, who can score there? Well, really no one. Maybe Cade, but he's not a known scorer. Uh, Frank more, Jackson. <laughs> yeah, Frank Jackson. So, uh, yeah, a more efficient Sadiq Bay, I guess. Um, um, yeah, a more efficient Sadiq Bay. Sadiq. Sadiq took 18 attempts again today. So that's good. That's good. That's what we want. 
That's what we want. Uh, as long as he, he, he takes those shots, if he makes seven or six or seven of those, he still get the double figures, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. The, in all these chaos, we haven't really talked about, you know, much about Donovan Mitchell and Rudy Gobert. Uh, they are the last in the feel good list of commish posted today. They've been solid. I mean, uh, I have Gobert in one of my teams in the Champions League, and really, there's some se- sense of uh, there's some peace of mind having a player like Gobert there, and even Donovan Mitchell because we have him in the Unbox League, and he's been really solid uh, throughout the season. I mean, I, I, I sometimes I'm just surprised he gives you the numbers he gives you. Um, and Utah is just I don't know they don't have COVID little injuries it's like I don't know what they do there but it's it's very smooth sailing well, they might be you know players like Gobert might be a little more cautious because you know but, but, but for owners please don't don't get mad at me if tomorrow Donovan and, and other players go into COVID protocol I'm not trying to jinx it I'm just saying, right? Maybe Utah is one of the teams that that are that is the least affected. I don't think they have anybody in COVID protocols ever yet. Um, if you think about it, <laughs> uh, it just came 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 to to me. Um, most of the COVID is from the east. That's true. Uh, yeah. Chicago, Charlotte. Uh, who else? New York, uh, Boston. Brooklyn. Yeah, New York. Um and the Brooklyn Nets and if you look at the West, uh the Lakers. Who else? There's really not much there on the West side. Clippers have have, have some. Clippers, yeah. Have some, yeah. I mean the Warriors now has your F Jordan Pool there. So I, I I read something about this. Something like uh the the travel going. I mean when when that, that's why we have to be careful when the Christmas season comes because. The travel would move towards the middle of, you know, people go home, yeah, right, go home to the mid to the non, you know, popular non uh, urban places in the U.S. So they are predicting that the next wave will be to OKC to these to these smaller smaller areas. So let's see, let's see. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. So pretty much that's the feel good. Uh, anything else? On our list, the rookies Josh Giddy and uh, Scotty Barnes, still Josh Giddy. So- solid. Josh Giddy almost had a twenty rebound game. Did he have a twenty? Yeah. The last time I saw it was yeah eighteen. Uh, I last check I I saw was sixteen rebounds. Uh, he ended up with eighteen and near triple double. Just didn't score much. But yeah, I think if you have Josh Giddy, you really won't mind the scoring. Yes, for me, yes. I have one Josh Giddy. I have two. Uh, and really, I rely mostly on his assist and maybe seven to eight rebounds per game. That's good enough for me. Uh, I don't really need him to score. If you build around him, wherein you have good scorers around him, I think he'll be very useful for you. That's a good point. That's a good point. He, the 18 rebounds was, was according to uh, the tweet. The, uh, Twitter, the OKC franchise high. If he had a triple double today, he would have been the youngest ever to record the triple double. So too bad he did not. But he will get the triple double with the way he with the way he he plays. His stats, yeah. He he gets rebounds. He passes. His passing is really good. So for me, the rebounds might be up and down, but the assists is really good. Just for me, if you're in a points league, he's really good. He's really gonna be good in points league. In category leagues, maybe if you do what Jeremy is saying, don't expect too much because he doesn't shoot the ball well. He doesn't score yeah. consistently yet. He doesn't have the three pointers yet. Steals blocks are not there. He turns the ball over a lot. But the counting stats are good. I mean he's like a uh, Westbrook. You have to build right yes, around him. Yes. yes. Uh, well, you don't build around him. Because he's really not a top tier guy like Westbrook, but uh, the other players that surrounds or the their top tier players should complement his game, or he should complement their game. Like if you have players who can score already, he'll help you because you know in the assist department, in the rebounding department, right? So uh, that's how I see 
Giddy's game being. So if you're looking for trade, trade to trading him, that's one of the selling points there. Uh, especially after a good game, you might want to look into. I'm not, I'm I'm not down on Giddy. I'm 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 mentioning trade trading him just just as a way of probably maximizing his um value, I guess, or yeah. perceived perceived value more than the value because. Yeah. I think this, this is a good this is a good game. Today he had a good yeah. game. But overall, throughout the season, you really won't notice his production, right? You won't really feel much. Uh, he won't wow you with the production. Like players like Scotty Barnes, players like Evan Mobley, the other rookies, or even Kate Cunningham. He won't wow you like those players, but yeah, um he is he has name value and he is solid in some categories. And and when you look at the stats, when he gets you twelve point seven rebounds, eight assists, that's good. And you would you would love you would love yeah. him. You would you would you would like him. And just saying, uh, just look at the stats, care more closely. And uh, yeah, he he has a lot of warts, lots of uh, holes in his game, in fantasy yeah. game, in real in real basketball sense. Of course, as a rookie, as an eight nineteen year old, this is really good. This is really good for yeah. him. I'm not saying he, next year don't draft him. He will improve as as he goes along with the season. And I'm I'm, I'm one of the big Giddy fans. But as fantasy managers, if you want to win, you have to do what's you know you have to do moves like maybe try to upgrade him to to other players. So so you have to explore which player. Those. If we mention upgrading to other player, which player do you think would be a good? Player? Um, I get. I there are a um, lot of players. Um, let's see. Um, let's let, let's let's break it down for, to guards and bigs. Yeah. I guess. I mean, for guards, uh, he could go as high as uh, maybe the Norman Powell. I think, although Powell is playing well, but after games like this, you know, you, you can. I, I will upgrade him to Scotty Barnes if I can, but I'm not so sure that would that would work. But you know, you can sell that because you can tell your manager the manager maybe you need assists. Yeah. Right, uh, Giddy, Giddy can give you assists, and Barnes, if Siakam and the team is healthy, he might might lose minutes. Yeah. So, so I, I'd like Barnes better. So, so for me, I like Barnes better fantasy wise because he's more uh, complete, more well rounded. Uh, for a big, uh, would I say as to what? Yeah, I say as to what? I say as to what? Yeah, something like that. I say as to what? But, but I say as to what? Um, the rankings is not that far off from yeah. from, Gidi, I, from I, was, I was just thinking, you know, uh, thinking about the bigs. The, those are the Nurkic too high. Nurkic, Nurkic will work. I think Nurkic will work. Nurkic is only ranked around 70, 75. Yeah. It's not, it's not high, and, and there's reason not, why. I look, yeah. Uh, he, uh, he's not been playing. You know. But would you rather well. have Nurkic? Yes, uh, I'd rather have Nurkic over Giddy. Yes. I'd rather have Nurkic over Giddy for sure. So so yeah. Uh, over. Marcus Smart, for example. Uh, I, I may go Giddy. I may go Giddy because um just thinking like there's nobody who can who's injured in OKC that can come back and kill Giddy's minutes mm-hmm. and usage. Whereas, whereas Marcus Smart is doing well when Jalen was out, Jalen comes back, Schroeder and Horford is out. What if Schroeder and Horford comes back and whatever? There's lots of pieces there, and I'm just gonna go giddy because Smart also lots of problems with the field goal and those stuff. Levert, nah, I, I'd go giddy. Although Levert, another a good thing about Levert, he did mention he he feels there's he said there's there's something about his body that changed. That's why he's playing better. I don't know what he did. Maybe, Maybe he has some, you know. Some massage, injury. you know, some some massage. No, he from, came from an injury. Yeah, but a but, scary one too. Uh, like right. Uh, yeah, yeah. A back injury. Is it a back injury or a back injury? A back right? injury. So, yeah. uh, maybe that affected his game a bit. Um, who else? A few more names. Jordan Poole. No. No. We Pool Pool is in COVID, and when he comes back, Lay will come back probably. Yeah. No, no, I, I'm not. I'm not even touching pool right now if you don't own him because it's too much uncertainty, and you're gonna probably waste some moves if you if it doesn't break right for you, right? So, yeah. 
Yeah. Um, Maybe bias, guys. Uh, is it to never, bias too high? Never, you never say never. I mean, after so, a game, like, they, uh, Maybe if you're playing, I don't know which leagues you guys are playing in. If you're playing in a veterans league, maybe it won't work. But if you guys are playing in a, like this is our first year playing or whatever, you know, those things can can happen. Can happen. Can happen for you. Right? And he has name value. Uh, Josh yeah. Giddy has name value. Uh, probably among the rookies, even before the season, he a, a lot more managers were high on him. Yeah, uh, that's why players like Scotty Barnes were not drafted as high. Uh, because no one really knew what they were going to produce. Uh, for Giddy, everyone expected him to play well, and you know uh, what he's doing now. Yeah, he's he's playing well. It's just that he hasn't been as good consistently as the others, maybe. Or like I said, the numbers won't wow you. Like um, you know, Barnes having what five blocks, for example, or maybe twenty points. And really good shooting, or maybe like a Mobley who has a double double and good defensive stats, or maybe a uh, Kate Cunningham who has more scoring, right? So he won't wow you like those players, but he has been one of the more consistent ones, I guess, uh, in in rebounding and in assists. And and I also want to mention uh, Jonathan Kuminga, who yeah, was the guy. Yeah, it was the guy we we talked about Damian Lee and Gary Payton. Yeah, they had good games, but it was Kuminga who 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 really had a great game. But yeah, disregard that and let, well remember that for the next time that Golden State will rest everybody because that will happen again. I just want to mention it just to, to get Jeremy angry because I know you know re- reminding him that Golden State rested. If Steph. you have Steph, tell me you're not pissed he that Steph rested today. I mean. Very inappropriate time, timing. The timing of Steph, Steph is just not just Steph, Conley and the rest, Drew, all of them. Everything. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, of all the you know top guys, I think so far he's the one who rested, right? Yeah, no one's really resting other than maybe an injury, which you really can't uh, you can't blame anyone there. But yeah, resting, come on, man, you just broke the record, right? What are you resting for? After a slump, you broke the record and you had the slump. Partying. <laughs> Rest from partying. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, that's it for Daily Fantasy Quickie. It's a fast one today. Not much going on other than COVID and injuries. Oh, Gobert. We haven't really much talked much about Gobert, but he's been uh, solid, like I said, throughout. Um, and yeah, and should be... Uh, helping your teams. I love my Gobert. I only have one, but I really love the makeup of my team there in the Champions League um, with Durant and Gobert as my top two players. Well, hopefully Durant pops back. Anyway, that's it for the Fancy Quickie. We'll see you guys tomorrow for is it Monday tomorrow? Yeah, Judgment Day mm-hmm. of uh, Week 9. And yeah, bye guys. Bye.